Thank you so much for watching Henry AI Labs. On this YouTube channel, we've reviewed several deep learning research papers. So after processing all this, do you have an idea for a new transformer neural network? What about a technique to improve GANs or Q learning? Maybe you want to try out deep learning with a new data set. Well, if you're looking to get into deep learning research, you'll need to have some serious engineering power behind your experiments. Without a platform like Determined AI, setting up large-scale deep learning experiments can be a serious headache. You want to be testing out ideas and writing papers, not debugging distributed training code, facing obscure errors, or having your entire experiment crash altogether. So, let's take a step back and talk about what you need to do to run a deep learning experiment and present a new idea in deep learning. At the time of recording this video, the two transformers GAN is making a lot of noise as an exciting new approach to the generative adversarial network framework. The idea is to use an all attention generator and then a vision transformer architecture like the uh, 16 by 16 images, patches is all you need paper from Google. And they're using the vision transformer for the discriminator and transformer in the generator. So it's an exciting idea for uh, integrating transformers in the GAN framework that you know maybe viewers of this video could come up with ideas like this and they just need the proper uh, coding frameworks in order to test out these ideas. So what does it require to test out these ideas? Well, in order to say that these uh, two transformers is better than the generative adversarial network baseline with say, uh, say like the DC GAN with the deep convolutional uh, architectures in the generator and the discriminator, you need to test those two different models. The next thing to do would be to ablate all the different hyperparameters of the transformer GAN. So when you have a vision transformer, it's splitting the image up into the, this uh, hyperparameter of the patch size. You might split it into 8x8 patches, 16x16 16 16 patches, or 32x32 32 32 patches. Then further, what happens with uh, model configuration, having more layers, having uh, larger intermediate uh, features like the width of these uh, feature maps and the intermediate layers of deep neural networks, as well as things like batch size, learning rate, augmentation strength. There are tons of hyperparameters that are going to influence the performance of a deep learning system and are important to have some kind of framework to search through these hyperparameters in order to report your new ideas in deep learning. So to come back to this idea, imagine you've come up with a variant of the layer normalization used in transformer blocks or you have some idea for structuring a multitask learning curriculum. Well, the performance of deep learning models is somewhat shrouded in mystery. Many parameters of the learning algorithm itself, known as hyperparameters, could heavily influence training. These include the learning rate, batch size, model size, uh, optimizer choice, or augmentation strength, to name a few. Before you can declare that your new algorithm is effective and present your results, you need to search through these values to make sure you've properly tested the old versus the new. This can also be useful for squeezing that extra bit of performance out if you're doing some kind of uh, like machine learning competition and you want to have the highest accuracy or uh, AUC score or all these kind of things. Coding and organizing a hyperparameter sweep system from scratch is really at least a couple of months work. Make that a few months if you're working with a team and sharing computing resources. So don't waste your time and check out Determined AI. In the rest of this video, I'll be explaining to you why I'm so excited about Determined AI. As a deep learning researcher myself, I've had to come up with a solution to this problem as well of hyperparameter optimization. One of my favorite algorithms for this is Hyperband. Hyperband presents a strategy to randomly allocate computing resources to different hyperparameter configurations. This is an angle on hyperparameter search that surprisingly hadn't really been considered before. About two years ago, I listened to Liam Lee explain cutting-edge research on random search and reproducibility for neural architecture search at ICML 2019. The slides I've linked to this talk is in the description of the video. Well today, Liam, alongside many other superstar researchers in hyperparameter optimization, are working at Determined AI to build this platform with all the cutting edge bells and whistles presented in hyperparameter optimization research. So as someone who really values this uh, deep learning research, I really trust this team to build out this infrastructure and implement these hyperparameter optimizations so that we can quickly test out these ideas with algorithms like hyperband or Bayesian optimization or these reinforcement learning evolutionary search algorithms and then all these other things like hierarchical neural architecture search that looks at different ways of parameterizing the search space itself. So I'm really excited about this team and I really believe in their ability to build such a platform. So as a final note before getting into a preview of the determined AI uh, platform, Henry AI Labs will be making videos that walk through the determined AI examples similar to the Keras code example series to help you get started with this as soon as possible. The rest of this video is about providing a little more information about determined AI and some uh, walkthroughs of the platform itself.
So we're going to start this off with two images that I think really explain the uh, determined platform well. So these are two images that are commonly found. This is from their determined AI documentation and a lot of their blog posts have this picture. And uh, I took this from their YouTube video uh, determined AI intro on their determined AI YouTube channel, which is linked in the description of this video. So in the orange is what's covered in the determined training platform. And these other things are things that are generally uh, live in the deep learning machine learning uh, ecosystem that are also relevant for uh, developing these pipelines. So first you have your data preparation. This is uh, you know where your data lives, like your S3 buckets and so on. Uh, on the bottom here are your runtime. So you could have AWS, you could have EC2 or spot instances. You can have the uh, GCP, Google Cloud Compute, or you could also have your own local cluster uh, running on Kubernetes or your own local machine. Like if you have your own uh, data science workstation or something like that, all these different runtimes can be managed with the determined AI platform. And then model deployment is something that's also not currently a part of the determined AI stack. So now let's talk about what uh, is contained in each of these orange boxes. The first of which is cluster sharing and resource management. So I've attended a lunch and learn with Determined AI, which is uh, their program for outreach on teaching people how to use the platform and implementing cutting edge ideas. In this case, the uh, DETR, Dead or Object Detection System with Transformers from Facebook. They implemented that and uh, showed you how to run the large scale experimentation with it on the Determined AI platform. So in this case, uh, in this example, they managed 128 GPUs. So they're showing you how to uh, manage this massive computing system with several different people who are going through the Lunch and Learn course. So that's another example of one of the videos that are on the Determined AI YouTube channel, Lunch and Learn Debtor, that I highly recommend having a look at if you're curious about uh, kind of what kind of content is currently on the Determined AI uh, YouTube channel. So the cluster sharing and resource management, super useful if you're you know working with a team and you're trying to work with 16 GPUs and each team member uses X GPUs for their experiment and so on. So it really abstracts this away, makes it a lot easier with a web UI and everything to facilitate cluster sharing and resource management. The next offering is distributed training itself. So in the current versions of TensorFlow and uh, you know running Keras with the TensorFlow backend, you may be used to things like uh, tf.distributed strategy, the mirrored strategy, and that kind of syntax. But a determined AI is going to have an API to handle distributed training for you in a similar way as these uh, like one lines of code that handle this distributed training without you having to worry about really the details of it. Experiment tracking describes having a nice interface to visualize the results of different experiments with deep learning. Say you have these different uh, model configurations and you already kind of, the search space really isn't as large as something like hyperparameter search. So the next thing we'll get into is the hyperparameter search that's offered. And we're even gonna show you a quick example of the CIFAR 10 example they provide in the ending of this video with the web UI and show you what that looks like. But they implement hyperband and this uh, you know random resource allocation right off the shelf with your hyperparameter search and it uh, results in a really interesting api that you can use for doing this kind of search we'll look at exactly how you define the model and then how you have your configuration.yaml file very similar to if you watch the keros tuner video in the keros code examples video on henry ai labs so in development is neural architecture search on the determined ai platform and seeing the expertise of this team and the general research area of neural architecture search and some of the exciting things that have come out of this, I expect this to be an incredibly powerful feature for this kind of uh, deep learning training platform. To have its own neural architecture search feature, something that's highlighted as in development and coming soon, and I just think this will be incredibly powerful and exciting to use. So finally, we also have the deep learning training data accelerator, visualization and debugging during the model training, and batch inference. So here's another picture of these different services. I think maybe just seeing it in another way will just help some of these things click for you a little better. You see how you have the data storage and management, uh, the data preparation uh, column in this image, and then having it in this box in this image. And then we have TensorFlow, PyTorch, and Keras with respect to talking about how we're managing these different runtimes with our shared computing resources with our team. We see how we can send PyTorch code, TensorFlow code, and Keras code using this determined AI management of TensorFlow, PyTorch, and Keras. And all that you have to do to monitor these different experiments is inspect the configuration.yaml file. And we'll look into that deeper when we look at the web UI itself. So again, we have experiment tracking, automated hyperparameter search, cluster sharing and resource management, distributed training, model deployment optimization, and model serving. And then we have the uh, final comment uh, column in the actual model deployment services that are outside the scope of Determined AI. The first question you might have is, what do I use Determined AI with? 
Well, it can run on AWS EC2, also works with the spot instances, which are uh, kind of like a cheaper way of using these EC2 instances, but you might get uh, kind of like timed out, something like that. So it's kind of like the Google Collab where you have these uh, lower cost resources, but you know, I'm not sure exactly how much that works because I don't personally have too much experience with using spot instances, but that's something that you can use Determined AI with. You can also use it with the Google Cloud Compute Platform, and then you can also use it with a personal workstation or if you have a cluster that's running on Kubernetes, you can all interface these things with Determined AI. So the way this would work is you have your computing like AWS, and then on your local machine, you're gonna write the model definition and the configuration for the uh, test, and you're gonna send that to the uh, cloud computing service through the Determined AI interface. So you write this code locally, and then you send it off to the computing uh, runtime to run the experiments. So now let's dive deeper into what makes me personally so excited about the Determined AI platform, which is AutoML and hyperparameter optimization. So again, when we're talking about hyperparameter optimization, we're looking to find the best performing values of the learning rate, batch size, whether batch size of 32, 256, 512, and so on, model configuration, say eight layers versus four layers, and then hidden dimension. Say you have hidden feature vectors of uh, 512 dimensions compared to 1024 compared to 256 and so on and then the data augmentation strength or all these other hyperparameters of deep neural network training and again deep neural network performance is really sensitive to these hyperparameters and it's really important to search through them to try to find the best uh, performance report proper baselines compare models properly and so on so neural architecture search is another really exciting idea. It's a bit more ambitious than hyperparameter optimization generally, where you're trying to find these optimal computation blocks to stack together to form these deep neural networks. So say when you have the uh, GPT transformer decoder model, it's done by having this one transformer decoder block stacked on top of itself several times. So neural architecture search and how many times you want to stack these blocks together in the uh, overall configuration of stacking blocks together is known as macro architecture search, whereas micro architecture search is this more fine grain trying to find this optimal block that's then stacked on top of each other itself several times. And this has a really large search space, so this definitely requires tools like hyperband and these different things, Bayesian optimization, evolutionary search, and so on in order to find a optimal neural architecture purely from search algorithms. So without further ado, here's a preview into the kind of uh, what's gonna be following on Henry AI Labs as we walk through these experiments. This is one of the experiments provided in the Determined AI documentation, CIFAR 10 PyTorch Adaptive Search. So this is the web UI for hyperparameter search. We can see it quickly by clicking on view configuration. This is what makes working with uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch, Keras, it's also easy because it's all just unified in the config.yaml files, and we just click on view configuration in our determined AI interface, and we can see the hyperparameters that we're searching through. So in this case, we see the learning rate, we have our uh, scale to search through, layer one dropout parameters, two and three, the global batch size, and learning rate decay. So we're searching through these hyperparameters that are configured, the min, max, the step count, it's all configured in this uh, configuration file that the Determined AI platform is using to run these experiments. So in this case, we see how we've run several different experiments of these configurations of hyperparameters for our CIFAR 10 classifier. Now we see this is hyperband in action. They haven't all been trained for the same amount of training time. We have the duration, we see some models have only been trained on 2,941 batches for five minutes of training time, but the validation metric is so high compared to the other experiments that why bother continuing to train this uh, configuration? It's not gonna perform as well as the others anyways. So this is a quick preview of what we're looking at with this uh, hyperparameter search interface. We have the configuration file, we have the checkpointing, the best validation loss, we have the uh, curves as this is happening over time in our trial 41, which is the uh, one that performed the best in the end, and we see how we have this unequal resource allocation implemented for us with these batches, and we don't have to bother with any of this complex, unequal resource allocation code ourselves because we can rely on the Determined AI platform. So Determined AI is implementing these tools for hyperparameter optimization. There is an extensive body of literature on AutoML, hyperparameter optimization, and deep learning research, and we have tools like different search strategies like random search, grid search, Bayesian optimization, evolutionary search, reinforced learning search, or differentiable search, all these have, you know, probably at least five research papers have explored each of these different techniques, mostly on Bayesian search though, and that implement these different ideas, and as well as these cool ideas like resource allocation, like the hyperband that we just saw, which is building on this idea of early stopping where no sense in training the model further if it's not getting any better. 
And then we also have ideas like hierarchical neural architecture search. It looks at different ways of parameterizing these black box search spaces. So just showing this slide as quickly to give an overview, of, there are all these different tools that are being developed in the hyperparameter optimization literature. It's a very active uh, branch of research for deep learning researchers to pursue. So all of this is being implemented and integrated in the determined AI platform. So you personally, if you're experimenting with GANs or Q-learning or uh, transformer designs, you don't need to bother with with this code yourself. And it's, you know, it's abstracting it away, it's offering you the service to have this already implemented without having to do it yourself, because it will give you a serious boost in performance to have this kind of tool for your experiments. So before we go back to the determined web UI to have a look at some of the other features like this uh, cluster management, particularly is what I want us to focus on right now with resource sharing. Uh, when I was watching the lunch and learn the debtor demonstration, this is a really great example of how a group can share these computing resources. So this is showing how they had this 128 GPU system and they have the different uh, uh, tutorial people who are following through the tutorial and running their experiments. And you can see this picture. It's a bad picture because I just screenshotted this from their YouTube video on their YouTube channel, Determined AI. This is from Lunch and Learned, the debtor model. And this is just showing a quick example of how uh, all these different experiments are running on the same cluster. So helping people interested in Determined AI get familiar with this uh, API for defining your models, setting up your configuration files, and setting up these different hyperparameter searches is gonna be the focus of the next upcoming videos on Henry AI Labs. But here's a quick preview of it, just so you have a sense of it. So we have this uh, class CFAR trial. It inherits this PyTorch trial object where we have this uh, self.context where we're accessing our hyperparameters like self.context.getHyperparameter and it gets this layer three dropout that is configured, the values of which, of which are configured in our configuration.yaml file. So this is from the adaptive search. Uh, this is just the constant trying to run uh, one loop through it. You see how we just have uh, layer one dropout is 0.25 compared to defining a range of values like 0.2 to 0.5 and so on. So Basically, just to give you a quick overview of how we do this, we have the defining the model. There's an API for how we're supposed to structure our code in order to send it off the determined uh, system. And then we have these YAML files that organize the hyperparameters really well. And don't worry about this too much because this is going to be the focus of these upcoming tutorials is to help you get really up to speed with using this and really familiar with the syntax. Thank you so much for watching this introduction to Determined AI presented by Henry AI Labs. The upcoming videos will be showing you more examples of the determined AI documentation and walking through these examples of setting up the model builder code, setting up the configuration files, and then sending them off to our cluster to run the experiments. So I also highly recommend checking out the determined AI YouTube channel. Uh, there's also some medium posts that are linked in the description of this video. And this overall going through these examples should be very similar to the Keras code example series. But in the end of this, I think you'll get a lot more value out of this because you need to have some kind of serious engineering power and some kind of understanding of these deep learning uh, training infrastructure systems, uh, ML ops, this kind of idea in order to really progress with your deep learning experimentation. So overall, thank you so much for watching. I'm really excited about this upcoming series explaining the determined AI examples. Uh, if there's anything that I left out of the video and you have a question, please just ask it in the comments of the YouTube video or if there's a mistake you think I've made along the way of explaining this or anything that you want to request with respect to these determined AI tutorials. So thanks for watching and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for the remainder of the Determined AI series and more deep learning and AI videos.